Hey guys, it's Biggs. I'm still down in South Florida. And one of the things we're gonna talk about today is this little guy right here. This is the cane toe. This is Rhineland marinia. It used to be formerly in the genus Bufo. This is a non-endemic to South Florida. And this one animal I'm holding right here is so prolific. It is literally the reason you see all these vats above ground and not ponds in the ground. This large terrestrial toad is actually native to South and, and uh, mainland Central America. It often reaches six to eight inches in size. It's not a small frog. It's not a frog, it's a toad, but it's not a little animal at all. This opportunistic and gregarious feeder consumes anything it can fit in its mouth. It doesn't even have to be alive. Rick has noticed that uh, this frog has often been caught several times eating the dog's food out of the dish. They can live up to 10, 15 years. It's a very, very old species, the cane toad. It was actually described by Linnaeus himself in the 18th century work Systemata Natura in 1758. Cane toads were purposely introduced to South Florida, big mistake again, as a form of natural pest control in the sugar cane fields, which gave rise to its common name, the cane toad. It's a, it's a prolific breeder. It breeds year-round. Uh, included in here, you'll see some video of the, 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 the sheer amount of tadpoles and, and things are on the ground for them. Uh, females lay large clumps of gelatinous egg masses with thousands of eggs, and the only problem being is they lay their eggs in the water. And the reason that's a problem is the king toad is extremely toxic. The adults are poisonous. They have a large petroid gland, which is right behind their front legs here. Uh, or sorry, it's right, actually, sorry, it's just behind their eggs. You can feel the cheek mass here, and that's where the petroidae gland, and they exude a, a severe toxin uh, when handled or bitten by a predator. The eggs themselves, uh, the eggs themselves are toxic. The tadpoles are toxic. And remember, those are in the water where the fish used to be. Uh, the highly toxic t substance known as a bufo toxin, the secretion can burn your eyes, irritate your skin. The eggs and tadpoles are equally lethal if they're ingested, as I mentioned. The absolute bane to a fish farm. This thing is an absolute terrible animal to be around here, and, there, and there's no way you can get rid of it. Lufotox is considered in several countries a class one drug alongside such drugs such as heroin. If ingested, it can induce hallucinations often, often lasting hours. Long-term exposure can result in death. One South Florida fish farm that I've known, Rick, the gentleman whose farm we're at right now, uh, he had his, his dog, uh, he had a Jack Russell Terrier named Pip. And Pippi had trained to kill the dog, uh, kill the toads on sight. The only problem being is this dog soon learned that uh, if he were instead of kill the toad, just kind of maim the toad a little bit, he'd bring it into his area and he licked the dog a little bit. Pip soon earned the moniker of Cracky. It's a bad name, but that's the name that they gave him because at high noon you can see Pip sitting there after licking a few toads, passed out upside down, foam coming out of his mouth, and eventually it was the reason of his demise due to heart failure. Uh, Cane toads on the farms often are killed directly on site. The cane toad.